uh, as you can see it's a beautiful day um, it's turned out quite nice so far it'd be a good day to go to work the job I have to do today isn't the most pleasant job but still it'd be a good day to do it if there is a good day to do it taking all that old carpet out of the woods is going to be just a horrendous ordeal after I do that I'm going to be quite dirty plus I tend to pick up ticks when I'm doing that job I end up crawling with the damn things and so I think I'll try to go into Perth and I'll try to shower thing again if there's nobody around or if there aren't many people around and there's especially if there's no kids around then I may try to take a shower we'll see how it goes if there's a bunch of kids around I won't because they'll use that to say that I'm doing something improper so I won't do that but I won't give them that opportunity but um, I have to be very careful with the police because uh, they've hung a lot of labels on me and the townspeople themselves have also done that so yeah Perf isn't really a safe place for me but uh, <laughs> there's a, a bug yeah a little beetle anyway um, I'm gonna tell you a story now that has to do with my involvement with the police and what ha what's happened um, the police have me on a uh, domestic terror watch list I'm considered a terrorist in this country I'm considered a domestic terrorist and um, <coughs> they have me on <coughs> a domestic terror watch list anyway and um, so I get treated a little differently if I get pulled over, quite often the cop will make me sit there and wait until backup arrives. And then the other cop will stand behind my car with his hand on his gun. And I'll be told that if I make any sudden moves, uh, I'm going to take a bullet to the back of the head. I've had that happen, where I've been told that after the backup arrives, when they will deal with me. Um, another thing that happened... When I lived above the Royal Bank in Perth, I lived there for 28 years. I was I came home one um, one night, and I had a bunch of scrap copper to strip, strip the insulation off it, you know, so you just have the the bare wire to sell, because it's worth a lot more money if it's stripped. And uh, I just remembered I got to put my garbage out today. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, I had, uh, I had this knife in the trunk of the car, and, uh, actually, this, this is the same knife, this is the knife I had in the trunk of the car, um, I want to take it with me today, because I may be able to use it to cut up the carpet. Anyway, because I was living above a bank, I didn't want to take that out of the trunk of the car and go around by the front of the bank, the door where you'd go into my apartment, to the building where I lived, was right beside the main entrance to the bank. And so I didn't want to go in there, and, you know, with a knife or whatever. I'd be around that door with a knife. So, me trying to avoid troubles, I um, went up the back fire escape with it. Well, there was a, some crackhead or whatever that was buying drugs out of the building across the street. I'd seen him before there. I once watched him snort something off his dashboard after he came out of that building, so I knew he was a, a drug, drug addict. Anyway, he yells up at me. Hey, he says, uh, that's illegal. And I wasn't in a great mood, you know. And I yelled down at him, what the hell are you talking about? That knife, it's illegal to have a knife. And I said, oh, mind your own effing business. And I went inside. Well, then I heard him because he was in the driveway behind the building and my windows were open. As I said, it was a stinking hot day in the summertime. It was during a heat wave in July. I hear him on the phone and he's describing me. You know, and he's going on about a knife and all that. 
Well, about 20 minutes later, I hear sirens. And then all these vehicles come, they park sideways in the, all the intersections. This, this, um, apartment, this building was on the corner. And they blocked off the intersections and all these men, all dressed from head to toe in black, toting rifles, took up positions all around the building. And then six of them came up into the building and anyway, they come straight to my door. And this was the tactical squad. Anyway, they're banging on my door. And my first thought was, I just won't answer it. But then I figured they'll kick the door in if I don't. So, because this is the tactical squad, you know, and they will do that. So, I answer the door. And they start going on about a knife. And, uh, anyway, then... So I told them, I said, yeah, I had a knife to strip some wire with. And the one cop says, well, don't, don't use a knife anymore. And I said, well, there ain't going to be much copper stripped if I don't use a knife. And I said, you can't tell me I can't use a knife to do my work. I said, that's insanity. Well, he said, I want to see the knife. Go, in, go inside and bring it out here. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, I'm ordering you to go inside and bring that knife out here so I can see it. And I said, I'm not going to do that. I said, if I go in there and I come out with a knife in my hand, you guys are going to shoot me to death. And when I said that, he, he, he got this look on his face and he had a little grin. He just kind of grinned at me and he, I said, all right, yeah, <laughs> you, know. you know. He was acknowledging that that was the plan. If I, if I had have done what he told me, went inside and got the knife and come out with with a knife in my hand there to shot me to death. And so, and he kind of gave me a little crooked grin anyway and nodded and said, yeah, all right, <laughs> you know. But anyway, they left. They did. And I dumped some strawberry pieces down there and some bananas. They've already eaten the bananas. Some, some animals gotten them already. But anyway, um... Yeah, they eventually packed up and left. They told me they were going to put it down in the record or whatever. And I said to the one cop, I said, uh, one more nail in my coffin, eh? And he says, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he said, that's about it. So anyway, there you have it. So that that's what I'm saying, that... This that incident of me bringing this knife up into my apartment so that I could strip copper wire led to the downtown area of Perth being completely blocked off and um, dozens and dozens of heavily armed men all dressed in black occupying the neighborhood and six of them coming to my door all of them toting rifles. You know, so yeah, pretty wild anyway. So that that's what I'm saying, that that's how it is. And I mean, the, the one cop basically acknowledged that it was a trap. They were hoping, I he was hoping that he could bully me into bringing the knife out. So that they could say I came out of the apartment with a knife in my hand and then they could shoot me to death. So, you know, yeah. Anyway, that's why I get paranoid around about cops like I do and that's why I, I, I notice things about cops and I know cops pretty well because of all this stuff happening I got put on the list as near as I can tell I got put on the ter uh, domestic terror watch list basically because the police didn't like me because I'd invoke my rights they tried to bully me they thought I was weak and I was alone pretty much in the world and they tried to bully me and I stood up for myself, and they didn't like it. And so I got put on a, a watch list anyway. Among other things, they've done a bunch of things. They've connected my name to so many things that... It, it, I, I'm actually ashamed to have my name connected to some of the things. Sex crimes, and break and enters, and thefts, and frauds, and everything else. None of which I do. So yeah, I'm... It's actually a shameful kind of a thing to have your name connected to such things. 
and when you're not guilty for them it's not only shameful but it's maddening and what happens is what's happened with me at least is I've developed a real a real just a hatred of the police like I mean I just take I see a, I see a police officer just the sight of a police officer I feel the hatred well up inside of me you know the uniform brings it out in me I, 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 I just really despise the police I think the police I think to be a police officer you have to be a bad person that you just have to be a really awful person and I don't think you'll last long as a police officer if you're not and I know I may raise some people's ire by saying this but uh, you know it's, it really is how I feel at least I'm being honest about how I feel whether whether it upsets people or not because I know most people believe the police are uh, are the good guys you know I've known hardened criminals who had more honor and decency to them than a lot of the police officers I've known. And that's quite a thing, you know. There were things that some hardened, there are things that hardened criminals won't do, you know. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Um, that's my, that's, well, that's part of my story anyway, and it might explain to you all why I am the way I am with regard to the police. I have a lot of stories about the police. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could write more than one book just about my interactions with the police alone, you know, and the things that have gone on. Them looking to get bribes from me. Them harassing friends of mine. Um, them uh, beating me up. Taking me out of cars and beating me. Them... Um, trying to frame me up for various crimes, connecting my name to various crimes, and so on, you know. And the only crimes I've ever been guilty of is crimes, vigilante-related crimes. And again, that's because the police have never served me, so I've had to sometimes take it upon myself to put an end to things that were being done, where people were interfering with me without any justification, just because they thought that they could. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I am guilty of that. I, 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 I've been violent with other men who were violent with me. I tell a story in one video about a guy that came back into a, a scrapyard um, looking to beat me up because I don't believe in psychology. That's actually why he wanted to beat me up. And I threatened him with a big wrench called a breaker bar, great big long chrome wrench. Um, to back him off. Well, by doing that, I committed a crime. That's actually an assault with a weapon, even though I didn't hit him with it. I would have hit him with it if he kept coming, if he kept advancing on me, I would have. But still, that is an assault with a weapon, technically. I could do a lot of time in jail for that. And, um, but I wasn't going to take a beating from some hothead just because I don't believe in psychology. And, but those are the kinds of situations I found myself dealing with anyway. And so, yes, I do commit crimes in those situations. What I did in that situation was actually a serious crime. But it prevented me from having to, get a, to take a beating because of a difference of opinion with another man. Because I don't believe in something he believes in. Anyway, that's it. Um... That's just one example, I guess. So, yeah, I, I am, technically, I am a dangerous criminal. Technically, I'm a violent criminal. But only under those circumstances am I that way. If, if, if people leave me be, I don't bother them. I'm not a danger to anybody who's vulnerable or weak, you know. I'm not a danger to children. I'm not a danger to weak adults. And I'm certainly not... Uh, a sex criminal or a thief or anything like that. You know. I'm not the guy that's going to steal from you. I'm the guy that might kill or hurt you if I catch you stealing from me. That's that's who I am. And I'm not the guy who's going to come up to you on the street and just randomly attack you. I'm the guy that if you do that to me, I, I, I if I can, I'm going to seriously hurt or kill you. You know. So I, I do it, while, while I do admit 
but that that alone makes me a criminal and in fact makes me a violent criminal and a dangerous criminal in a way I still don't think that the attention I get from the police is warranted if they would do their jobs I would never have gotten to the point where I started to take it into my own hands but we do what we have to do I'm not going to be a punching bag I'm not going to be the community punching bag you know just because people think I'm weak Hey you. Anyway, I gotta go. It's time to, time to go to work. And, uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be no trouble. I think that that one cop is getting ready to cause some trouble for me. I just don't know what form it'll take yet. But I'm prepared to deal with that when it comes, that's all. Alright, we'll talk to you later. I hope you all have a good day. It's a beautiful day today. I'm not really looking forward to the job I have to do today, but I am looking forward to getting started. <laughs> we'll talk later. I'll make more videos from the property today. I know you all like those videos at the farm. It is a beautiful place. All right. Bye for now.